In 2006, I got a call one day from Ford Motor Company. They had a new CEO. His name was Alan Mulally. Brilliant, brilliant man who had come in with a great team and they had a plan that they've developed to turn Ford around because Ford was struggling. They'd gone from 25% market share to 15% market share. And if they didn't make a change quickly, they were going to be out of business. Alan Mulally started working, but one of the first things he wanted to do was to stabilize the workforce and get the workforce stabilized and changed. So he gave a generous offer to those who had been working there, some of them as long as 50 years, to take a buyout. But not many people were taking it. Imagine that you worked for Ford for all of your life. Your father worked for Ford and your grandfather worked for Ford. They didn't want to take the buyout. After a few months of trying to offer this buyout, one day I got a call from Ford. They said, one of our people in our executive suite read your book, A Setback Setup for a Comeback, and heard that you've helped companies make comebacks. We'd like you to help us in an effort we're doing. We want you to help us to get this buyout to our people. And I said, I'd be happy to do it. But I said, I don't want to talk to them, though, about taking the buyout. I'd rather talk to them about living their dreams. I'll tell them how I was a nightclub singer who got fired and replaced by a karaoke machine. And how I was broke, busted, and disgusted. But I made up my mind that in America, if you have a dream and you're willing to work hard on that dream, you can live your dreams. They said, we'd be happy to have you share that message. And for six weeks, I went around the country every day in a different city, doing sometimes two plants a day every day. And the night before Thanksgiving, 2006, I did my last program. Flew home that night on the last thing smoking in Washington, D.C. The next day was Thanksgiving, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday was the buyout day. They had to make a decision that Monday. Tuesday, they tabulated the results, and on Wednesday, I got a call first thing in the morning from the Detroit Free Press. They said, Mr. Jolly, we just want to let you know that 38,000 people took the buyout. 25,000 was their goal, but 35,000 took the buyout. They said, what did you tell them? I said, it's about living your dream in America. 